We're driving a 2024 Mazda CX-5. It's a compact SUV. Coming up, is this thing better than the similarly sized and much, much newer Mazda CX-50? Also, a new solution to one of our greatest CX-5 complaints. Let's begin with interior. Much like the CX-50 we drove not too long ago, this is a very simple and clean aesthetic. For some people, it may be too plain. I like it because it makes the bold touches really stand out, like this metallic bit and the red stitching. I don't really care for this shiny black plastic. It really shows off the dust and fingerprints. What I do like is how nice most of this vehicle feels. It's nice and squishy and soft. The volume knob here, or even like the window switches and everything has a premium feel. Moving to practical concerns, I wish there were power ports up here so you could set a phone in an obvious spot. However, we do have wireless phone connectivity and we're gonna talk more about that in a second. So you could have a phone wirelessly connected here and then charge it on the wireless phone charger. If you have a second phone, you can put it in here. You've got a USB-C port and then there's these little slots dug out so you can run a wire out in case you need access to your phone. There is good door storage. There's a sauce pocket up top. Down below you have room for a bottle and various other crap. The seats are comfortable, but definitely on the firm side. I also wish there was a little more lateral support given how quickly you're likely to drive this. In the upper shoulder region, it doesn't hold me in place quite as well as uh, I might prefer. Seated behind my ideal front seat position, I've got just enough knee clearance. Headroom is actually pretty good. I'm five foot 10 uh, with a long torso. That middle position with that center hump could be a little bit difficult for an adult, but it's perfectly sized for our child. Kiddo, how did you like sitting in that middle spot? Very comfortable, except the fruit room with the big hump is kind of... Thank you for weighing in, and now back to snacking. One thing we have in the CX-5 that we do not have in the CX-50 is a recline function. Now, it's not an elaborate recline function, it's two positions, but I do like the fact that you can get a little extra lean if you are so inclined, and I'm normally so inclined. For cargo space, there are 30.8 cubic feet. There are much roomier options. CRV and RAV4 both come to mind. But for our family, it's actually plenty of space. And I really like how it's organized in that that 40-20-40 split gives you a lot of flexibility for expanding that space. They've got those little remote releases in the back, including for that middle 20 position. It's a two height load floor, and the difference between the low height and the high height is so minuscule as to kind of negate the function. Just like make it one height, save yourself the engineering Mazda. I really like the lower height because it helps keep things from sliding out the back after you've been driving around with, say, a trunk full of groceries. There is just a little bit of underfloor cargo space, some cargo nooks on the side, and then also we have an actual spare tire back there, which uh, seems to be increasingly rare in new vehicles. What about getting our booster seat installed? The latch points don't have covers, but they are slightly the inset, so it's a little tricky to get it installed. I also wonder if it might be a little narrow for a rear-facing car seat. Child, how do you find climbing in and out of the Mazda CX-5? Easy because it's super low and the door opens pretty, pretty wide. I also like the fact that the doors cover the sills. So uh, if you drive up here in the mountains and you get a bunch of like mud and dirt and like snow and stuff on the outside of the vehicle, when you get in the vehicle, you probably won't get that stuff on your leg. As for safety, the CX-5 rates strongly a five-star overall from the NHTSA and it is a top safety pick from the IIHS. It also includes a full suite of active driver assist and six airbags. Family, what do we think? Is the CX-5 family Yay! friendly? Small family friendly. Rear window test. <gasps> Almost on the way down. Bam! Armrest test. Driving in a comfortable eight and four, I can't touch either of the armrests with my inboard or outboard elbows. But it's, they're so squishy. Well, they're pretty squishy, but if you push a little bit, you can feel that there's some real hardness hiding underneath. Same deal on the outside. This edge here, if you get underneath that cushioning, pretty firm. Because of reach issues and hidden imposter hardness, I'm gonna go 44% inboard. I never do 44, that's weird. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm gonna go with it. 44% inboard, and let's say 57% outboard. Hey, Hey, would you like to see more videos like this where we review cars as a family plus the occasional helicopter adventure? If so, you are welcome to subscribe. Style! 
really like the style of the CX-5. I think there is a cohesive look to it, like the way this curve in the front mimics this curve in the rear. They did a very good job when they designed this thing eons ago for the 2017 model year. This is the eighth year the second generation CX-5 has been on the market. They did an update in 2022 just to kind of refresh things, but this is a very old design. Want to know a secret? What's that? I like this better than the newer Mazda designs. Want to know a secret? Yes. I disagree. I know. <laughs> but I mean, that does speak to the enduring quality of the current CX-5's design. Couple paint thoughts. We got that red sole metallic on our tester, and I think that is the most beautiful red in the automotive industry. Dude. Well, you're just jealous. Yeah, you wish you were sold red metallic. <laughs> oh, and then for 2024, they have added a couple of colors. You can now get your CX-5 in platinum quartz metallic, and then also zircon sand, previously only available on the CX-50, is available on the CX-5, but only if you go with the carbon turbo trim. That carbon turbo trim is also new for 2024. Despite its incredible age, we really like the look of the CX-5, although her more than me. But what do you think? Do you like the CX-5? If so, if no, tell us in the comments section. In motion! Driving the CX-5, I think it rides pretty darn well, especially for a vehicle that's incredibly old. Uh, it has a more sophisticated suspension. It's got a multi-link rear, unlike the CX-50, which has a torsion beam rear. And yet, I prefer how the CX-50 drives. To me, it feels a little more connected with the road. So even though they're working with maybe less sophisticated parts, the tuning, I think, and probably the chassis overall is more developed, which is not to say this is uncomfortable to drive. I just prefer the CX-50. Now when we get into these corners here, things get a little bit more nuanced. Notice I can move the steering wheel and not much happens. It's not because it's a slow steering ratio. It's a 15.5 to one ratio. That's only slightly slower than we experienced in the CX-50. I think what we're experiencing there is like some looseness. To be clear, my expectation is not that this drives like a sports car, because I don't expect that from uh, SUVs and I don't expect that from Mazda certainly anymore. But when you offer an input to the vehicle, what you want as the driver is to get a response because when you know the vehicle is listening to you and responding as you expect in the time you expect, that breeds confidence. All that said, we're going around the corner just fine and most people won't care about all those nuances. And to Mazda's credit, they do some really great stuff with electronics. The feature called G-Vectoring Control, which imperceptibly reduces torque to put a little bit of weight on the front tires as you're entering a corner when you're steering, and it's all imperceptible. But you feel like, ah, oh, the car is just sort of going around the corner in a predictable fashion. Bonus points to Mazda for getting all that data and making it work. You somehow make that sound naughty. Mmm, oh, so many zeros and ones. <laughs> the last time we drove a CX-5, it had the naturally aspirated engine, and to us, that revealed some of the lack in the transmission. With only six ratios, when you would go between those gear changes, you could really feel like it would have to kind of build its steam again. Here, because you've got that turbocharged engine and a lot more power to work with, when you get those gear changes, you just kind of keep rolling. In day-to-day -day operation, the six-speed automatic works fine, reasonably quick reactions, fairly smooth gear shifts, but for best operation, it is really ideally paired with that turbocharged engine. On the S Premium trims and above, you have three different drive modes to choose. That off-road setting is an interesting one. It's really to make it feel more like it does on-road when you're off-road, which is enhancing stability. Ground clearance for a compact SUV is reasonable, but I would be concerned about underbody protection uh, if I were driving this thing in uh, real off-roading. So, you know, keep it on mellow trails. Or don't, actually, a, a buddy of mine, Dave Coleman, who works at Mazda, before they introduced the CX-50, actually did some pretty bad off-roading in a CX-5. It was really impressive. I took that more as a triumph of the human spirit than as a uh, notch in the CX-5's belt. Uh, maybe a little of both. And I have grown tired of hearing myself speak. Let's see what Evie thinks. Evie's at the wheel. Does the vehicle fit you okay? It does. I do feel like I could maybe be higher. Well, you do have a little bit of an adjustment there, and yeah. you have actually raised something that I think is really interesting. You keep talking the about seat? the Yes. Sorry. So interesting. <laughs> you can, like, put a button in it and everything. <laughs> no, we were talking about seat height between the CX-50 and the CX-5. The seat here is 5.7 inches higher, which is a substantial amount, than the CX-50. So you may experience a more commanding view than you might in the CX-50. We. Do you feel like you got enough power? I do, and it sounds 
very powerful. The last time we drove it, you thought that the uh, Mazda CX-5 had merely adequate power, and that was mm. the base engine that did not have a turbocharger. You thought it just kind of sounded noisy. Noise without acceleration is just noise. <laughs> but when you couple it with real thrust, it can be exciting. Yes. Why are you doing that? What? No reason. <laughs> Sweetie, what's happening over here? Let's move this along. <laughs> How do you feel about the steering? There's a little bit of a dead space on center, so it's not turning right away, which I don't really care for. Do you feel like it's a manageable amount of effort? It is a bit on the heavy side, but luckily I'm very strong. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm laughing because of an unrelated joke. Cool. <laughs> How do you feel about visibility? The windows are on the small side, but the view out is still good. The pillars are physically smaller. It's one of the tells that you're in a car that's been on the market for a while. If we were in the market to buy a compact SUV, would you feel comfortable driving a Mazda CX-5? I would. Sweetie's feeling comfortable. I'm getting back in the driver's seat. In total, the CX-5, despite being very old, is still a very pleasant day-to-day -day driver. Onward to remarks. Infotainment. We have a standard 10.25 inch screen, high mounted, close to driver's field of view, primarily operated through this knob down here, but as teased in the beginning of the video, for 2024, Mazda has introduced a fix for the thing that annoyed us the most about the CX-5. I really don't mind using the uh, knob for this, but uh, for Apple CarPlay, which is an inherently touchable system, I would love to touch it. And now you can. Yay! And you've started an audiobook. Very good. <laughs> Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard with this system, and there's also wireless functionality, which is super cool. That touch functionality is only meant for your smartphone connectivity, and by default, you can only use it when the vehicle is parked or driving at a very, very slow speed. If you would like to use the touchscreen functionality above just a creep speed, like at normal driving speed, here's how you do it. Using the wheel, settings, connectivity settings, Bluetooth iPhone connectivity settings. Then you have to select your specific device, Micah's iPhone, and then scroll way down to the bottom, touch screen in motion for all devices, select that. And now, after we accept that warning, when we go back to the main screen, we're gonna go to Apple CarPlay, I'm doing 10-ish, eh, there we go. Still able to do it. Although I'm gonna stop because I'm gonna run into this wall. If you would appreciate added functionality like that, you might also appreciate Flying Eyes Eyewear. Their unsurpassed flexibility, durability, and comfort are one of the reasons why it's the only eyewear I'll wear in a helicopter. If you'd like to learn more about Flying Eyes Eyewear, click the link in the description below. What we learned in our last CX-5 video is that the CX-5 inspires a lot of knob-related passion which is not what it sounds like, but <laughs> if you still love the knob, that's totally fine. But I Use love the knob. I love that Mazda listened and gave uh, everybody else who prefers to touch their uh, CarPlay or Android Auto the option to do so. Well done, Mazda. Also teased in the beginning of the video, we were gonna talk about whether or not the CX-5, despite its incredible age, is, is it better than the CX-50, which is much, much newer and similarly sized? The CX-50 has a much more contemporary exterior design. The interior is more modern and offers uh, just a little bit extra cargo space. It's also more capable off-road, and I prefer the CX-50's off-road manners to the CX-5. Countering all that in the CX-5's favor, it is similarly sized to the CX-50. It is $1,000 less on virtually every trim across the board. Unlike the CX-50, when you get in and you start the engine, it doesn't automatically start beeping at you. And it's called a CX-5, so it's got name recognition. If it were me, I would go with the CX-50 over the CX-5. However, my opinion does not align with reality because more people bought CX-5s in 2023 than bought CX-50s. Literally three times as many people bought the CX-5. So no, the CX-5 is not better than a CX-50, but it doesn't matter. All right, let's talk engine choices. The base engine is a 2.5 liter inline four cylinder. There's a new feature for 2024 called iStop, which is basically automatic engine start-stop. Fuel economy is somewhat better. Then there's that turbocharged version of the 2.5 liter that we've got in our tester that comes on the carbon turbo trim and higher. With either engine, all-wheel drive and a six-speed automatic transmission comes standard. And if you want to tow with either engine, it maxes out at 2,000 pounds. Sweetie. Yes? Will you share our trim recommendation? Oh, should I? <laughs> yes. Okay, great, 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 great. <laughs> our trim recommendation is which trim will give you the essential features you would regret not getting, but at the lowest possible price. 
For 2024, Mazda has ditched their former base S trim. Now, the 2.5 S Select is the entry trim, and that's our trim recommendation. It includes dual zone climate control, rear vents, leatherette seating, heated front seats, a power driver's seat, and smart key access. Though I wish you could just grab the door handle to unlock the doors rather than having to push a button. If you're ready to buy a CX-5 of your very own, click the Kelly Blue Book pricing link in the description below to see what your current car is worth for a trade-in and what you should pay for a CX-5. As for compact SUV competitors, there's the Honda CRV, Kia Sportage, Toyota RAV4, and the Mazda CX-50. Did we miss any remarks? If so, tell us in the comment section. And now, it is our daughter's time to shine. Kiddo, can you tell us what is your favorite feature of the Mazda CX-5? The rear seat heater buttons are so much fun to push. Do you care about having your seat heated? No. <laughs> you just like pushing the button? And that was Kiddo's favorite feature. Family, I think we've done a good job reviewing the CX-5. May I have a five? And a five. And you can get your high five. Bam!